Alright, so starting off from the last episode, third person, blueprints, third person character. Alright, so inside the character, you want to come down here to what we had last time. We're not going to change very much to this, but we're going to add a little bit onto this. Specifically right here before these delays. So, right here, drag this delay up. And then, right after the set movement mode, do a sequence right here. And the first value goes up to the to the delay up here. And then what we want to do is drag in another delay. Or just search for it. And you want to delay by the same amount. So 1.3. Then we actually want to connect this into a timeline. So right click and do add timeline. And this just adds a timeline component. And we can simply name this like prone transition. Or something like that. And so now, since this is the prone transition on the true path up here, this is actually standing up. So this delay needs to go into reverse from end. And the whole reason for this delay right here is because when we set the movement mode to none, we can't actually like adjust anything in the character. So what we do is we wait until the movement mode is set back to walking. You can have a custom movement mode, or well, for this one down here, you can have a crawling one, but just for the tutorial, I have them set to walking. But anyways, we can't actually move the character, the component and stuff, the components, whenever we're set to none. So we wait for the movement component to go back to walking. And this also adds like a little nice transition as well. But anyways, we can do the exact same thing down here on the false path. You just drag this up a little bit and then come over here drag in a sequence or search for it if I can spell and then again the true path is here and then we can just copy and paste this delay right here put this onto the false path or the second path and then completed we want to play from start because this is us actually going prone and then we can open up this timeline and actually add a timeline in here so open it up and then hit add track right here Add a float track and just name this prone track, I guess. And then we want to right click to add a key for the time, set it to zero. And for the value, set it to zero. Right click to add another key for the time, set it to one or 1.3, I mean. And then for the value, set it to one. And for the length of our track, we want to set this to 1.3 as well. This is just that time that we did on the delay over here for like how long the animation takes. So now if you compile and save and you go back to the event graph, you should have access to the prone track right here. Off of this, or well not off of it, but you want to right click and search for alert float. And then you want to copy and paste it for another one. And then the alpha is going to be the prone track for both of them. And then as well, you want to right click and search for alert vector right here and drag this in and connect that to right there. All right, so what these alerts do is they're going to basically just hold the values for the capsule half height and stuff, because whenever we go prone and we adjust the half height, as you can see, if I Go ahead and over here to half height, and I shrink this half height, and then I shrink its radius. As you can see, we want it smaller whenever we're proning. But then, as you notice, whenever we're prone, we're going to be laying down down here. So what we want to do is drag the character up as well, so that it fits inside the capsule. So this is dependent on like what character you're actually using. I have the values all pre-made that work pretty well or they work pretty well for the uh manny character and any character that's like rigged to this mesh and is like about the same size so you could just use my values but you can play around with it and use your own values as well but anyways heading back to the event graph this top lip right here is actually the current and prone capsule radius so for the a value you just simply want to do 34 and then for the B value we want to say 32 
Again, the 32 is the value that I found was good. And so now the lerp, the second lerp down here, this is going to be 88. Because again, the value is right here for the half height. And then the B value is going to be 32. The exact same as the radius right here. That's essentially just going to make a little, a little tiny sphere. And so now for the lerp vector, if we click the mesh right here, the current value is negative 89. So we can go ahead and just say negative 89 right there. And then my value that I found works good is negative 27. And so now with all these values set up, we can drag in the apps, the capsule component itself. And then drag over this and do set size, set capsule size, and drag this onto update. And then our top value is going to be the radius. And then the bottom value is the half height. And if you wanted to, you could set these values to variables. Like if you want other blueprints to know what these values are. But in some cases, or in most cases, it doesn't really matter too much. Which is why I just directly plugged them in right here. But then for the alert vector down here, we want to drag in the character mesh. And then drag over this and do set relative location. And then connect this up. And then drag this into the new location like that. So now if we compile and save, what this will do is have a smooth transition for us whenever we're laying down and standing up. So next, or lastly, we want to detect if there's actually something above our head whenever we try to stand up. So to do this, it's really simple. You just want to drag this branch right here at the start way back. And then off of the true path, you want to do a line trace by channel. Which, if you're unfamiliar with line traces, is there are these little rays you can shoot off somewhere. And they're not very costly whatsoever. And it will return information. Such as like if that ray hit something, what it hit, the material on the object, that sort of stuff. So basically, we want to fire a ray from our character and we want to fire it upwards a certain distance or the height of the character per se and if that ray hits something then we know we can't stand up so right here off the return value you can just hold down b and left click for a branch and just connect a branch up like this and this return value returns true if it hits something so off of the false path we want to go down here because only if we did not hit something do we want to stand up. And so like I said, we want to fire this line trace from our character's location. So simply right click and do get actor location. Like that. And this is going to be the start location. The end location is a little bit trickier. What we want to do is right click and do get actor rotation. And then off of this, do get up vector and then this up vector if we multiply this right here we multiply and then instead of being a vector we convert this to a integer this multiply will be the distance the line trace goes so for me i think a value of like 180 is decent it goes like right to the top of the character's head and so now this multiply by 180 only has one value on it in one of the axes, and that axis is the up vector over here because this get up vector right here re like say the y axis is upwards then it will return like 0 1 0 i believe or say if the z vec z axis is the up vector then it will return 0 0 1 and so whenever we multiply by 180 we just get 0 180 0 so then we simply just need to add this 0180 to the current location of the actor. So that's when we do an add right here. And then you connect this up. And so now this will add 180 to the axis that's facing upwards. And then this will be our end location right there. And then of course down here, draw de debug type. You can do persistent just so you can see the line trace. If you don't want to see it no more, then just do it for none. But yeah, now we can compile and save and test this out. 
All right, so testing it out, if I lay down, as you can see, it lays down and then there's a nice little transition. And then if I stand up, I can't move no more. And then it's a nice transition coming back up. This camera tr transition, I really enjoy. But you can change it to be different. You can like take out the movement mode stuff and you can make it where the camera moves at the same time whenever you're crouching and or proning and standing. But I just like this little effect. But then if we come over here to this little block I place, if we prone, as you can see, I can go under it now. But if I try to stand up, as you can see, it doesn't let me because that line trace we're firing is hitting the cube right here. But then as you can see, if I crawl out, it doesn't hit, so then it allows me to just stand up. But yeah, that's the, uh... But yeah, that's part two to the prone tutorial. And it added collision like this, so you can't stand up. And yeah, if you enjoyed or found it useful, then leave a like and subscribe for more. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.